During World War II, many countries started work on new powerful tank designs. The Germans created the Mouse, the British created the Tortoise, and the Americans created the T-28. Nearly every nation in the war had drawn up plans for super tanks, and that is what this series is about. In 1942, because of the successes of the Martyr 1, 2, 3, and the Stug 3, the Germans decided to create a new tank destroyer using an existing tank's chassis. The Germans would use a casemate like most of their tank destroyers to save weight, materials, and money at the expense of the versatility of the turret. It was decided the new tank destroyer would have a 128mm gun which was known to have a high accuracy rate. The tank would have a max speed of 21 miles per hour. It was decided in 1943 to use the chassis of the Panther or Tiger I for the new vehicle. After a wooden model of the vehicle was constructed, it was decided the Panther chassis was not suitable for the new vehicle, so the Tiger chassis was chosen instead. Another wooden mock-up, this time using the Tiger chassis, was presented to Hitler. Two prototypes were manufactured, one with the eight road wheel Porsche suspension and the other with the Henschel nine overlapping road wheel suspension like the ones used on the Tiger II. The tank was designated the Jagdtiger, with its original name being the Jagdpanzer IV. The main gun had limited traversing around 10 degrees. The entire vehicle had to be turned to aim the vehicle's gun. 150 Jagdtigers were ordered with only 70 to 88 being built. The Jagdtiger suffered multiple mechanical and technical problems because of its weight and underpowered engine. The gun used a two-part ammunition, which required two loaders. The massive gun had to be recalibrated even after short off road traveling. The tank was slow as it was equipped with the same engine as the Tiger I and Tiger II. The Ag Tiger's transmission broke down regularly because of the need for the near 80 ton vehicle to turn to attack targets. The massive gun had to be locked down in transit, and if this was not done, the mounting brackets would be so worn out that the gun wouldn't be accurate when firing. This would require the brackets to be replaced, as well as a crew member having to leave the tank to unlock the gun for it to be traversed. According to a report recorded by a German tanker named Carius, a 128mm projectile went through all of the walls of a house and destroyed an American tank behind the house. The first Jag Tiger to be lost was an Operation Nordwind and was the heaviest vehicle used in World War II. It was destroyed by an American infantry unit using a bazooka. Ironically, bazookas were considered to be ineffective against such massive vehicles. In one case, a Jag Tiger climbed a hill to attack five American tanks with two withdrawing. The American tanks could not penetrate the 250mm frontal armor of the Jag Tiger. However, when the untrained commander lost his nerve and turned the vehicle to go down the hill instead of backing down, the American tanks knocked out the Jag Tiger that had exposed its weaker side armor. The majority of the Jag Tigers were lost to mechanical issues and were destroyed by their crews. The basic design of the mouse was shown to Hitler by Porsche in 1942. He approved the design and work on the tank began. By 1943, the first prototype was ready. He used a Daimler-Benz MB517 diesel engine and would weigh around 100 tons. Its tracks were similar to the Tiger's and two electric engines mounted in the rear of the vehicle would drive them. The tracks were included in the vehicle hull. The frontal armor was around 220 millimeters and the side armor was up to 190 millimeters. The turret's armor was even thicker with 240mm at the front and 200mm on the sides and back. The gun mantlet was 250mm. The main gun was 128mm and the secondary gun was 75mm. It did not have a machine gun for close combat. By May 1943, a wooden mock-up of the mouse was completed and presented to Hitler. He approved it for mass production and ordered 150 of them to be built. He also had the gun upgraded to 150mm, saying the 128mm looked like a, quote, toy gun. Even though it could go through most, almost twice the Sherman's front armor, and upgunning it seemed somewhat pointless. The weight of the vehicle was now around 188 tons. The problem of not having machine gun was addressed with the addition of the Navertigungswaffe, which was a rotatable grenade launcher mounted on the roof. An NG-34 machine gun was also placed in the turret with the main gun and pistol ports were added. There were plans to build an MG-151-20 cannon for any aircraft use, something the mouse would have needed being a giant slow target at the time when the Germans did not have air superiority. Because of its weight, it could not cross bridges and would have to ford them. However, with its large size, it could easily do this. 
The plan to ford larger rivers was to sink the mouse and it would have to drive across the riverbed while another mouse supplied it with electricity via cable. It would be supplied by a large snorkel which would allow it to cross rivers 26 feet deep. The first mouse was the V1 and it did not have a turret as designers were testing to see the performance of the vehicle. In 1944, the second version, the V2, was delivered. It was equipped with a 128mm main gun and differed in many ways to the V1 prototype. In July of 1944, Krupp, who was manufacturing the mouse, had four in the works when they were ordered to halt production and scrap them. The V2 was fitted with a Daimler-Benz MB517 diesel engine and a new electric steering system. By the time the V2 had been captured by the Soviets, the crew had blown the tank up and all but the turret were badly damaged. The Soviets also captured the V1 and had two tanks assembled into one and shipped for Russia for testing. Afterwards, the newly created tank was sent to Kubinka Tank Museum, where it is now on display. Ordered as a parallel to the mouse design, the E100 would have been lighter than the mouse and would have many standardized parts. In 1944, Adler submitted designs for the E100. It would have been armed with 150mm and 75mm guns. The 700 horsepower Maybach HL230 engine with transmission taken from the Tiger I with a top speed around 14 miles per hour and a new 1200 horsepower Maybach engine with a top speed of around 25 miles per hour were both considered. Its tracks were narrow and its side skirts could be removed for rail transit. It would have had a turret similar to the mouse but much lighter. It would have had frontal armor from 150 to 200 millimeters, the sides being 120 millimeters and the back 150 millimeters. The turret armor would have been 200 millimeters thick, the turret sides 80 millimeters, and the turret rear 150 millimeters. It weighed around 124 tons. A tank destroyer variant was given the green light, but it doesn't seem to have gotten far. In July 1944, Hitler ordered work on super heavy tanks to be stopped. The project continued, but at a low priority. Only three employees would assemble the prototype. The vehicle never being completed was found by the 751st Field Artillery Battalion of the American Forces in, in April 1945. It was given to the British for evaluation and was later scrapped. The Leichter Lau and the Schwerer Lau were two variants designed for the Panzer VII Lau. The Leichter would have weighed around 83 tons with 100mm of frontal armor, a 10.5cm L70 high velocity gun which included a machine gun with a coaxial on it. It would have had a top speed around 17 miles an hour. The Leichter was cancelled by Hitler. The Schwer would have weighed 99 tons and had a top speed of around 22 miles per hour. Its main gun would be an 8.8cm L71 and its frontal armor would be up to 140mm. Both designs were dropped in favor of the mouse. In June 1917, the German War Ministry ordered a new super heavy tank intended to be used in breakthrough situations. The design was carried out by Captain Ger and Joseph Vollmer, who was a captain and engineer working for the Transport Technologies Board of Examiners by the Army. In June, the War Ministry approved the design and ordered ten. Five would be built by Reib Ball Bearing Factory in Berlin and five by Wegman & Co. of Kassel. It originally weighed 165 tons, but this was reduced to a more reasonable 120 tons. The huge size and mass of the K-Wagon made this transport impossible. It measured 42 feet 8 inches long, 19 feet 8 inches in width, and 9 feet 10 inches high. It was decided that it would be split into sections to be transported by rail. It would be reassembled at the front line. Two prototypes were built and were almost complete by the end of the war. It had six modules for transport. The commander would give instructions to the crew of 27 via lights. The command system was similar to that of destroyers, so the Germans called it a land ship. The drivers would be driving blind with only the commander's instructions telling, where, telling them where they were. The K-Wagon would have a commander, two drivers, a signaler, an artillery officer, 12 artillery men, 8 machine gunners, and 2 mechanics. It was armed with four 77mm fortress guns and seven MG-08 machine guns. Flamethrowers were considered for the tank, but later rejected. It had 40 millimeters of armor. The K-Wagon never saw combat, and the only completed vehicle, the Reeve, was quickly destroyed by the Allies. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video, and if you want to, subscribe. Ultimately, all the German super tanks would never see the battlefield, except for the Jagdtiger. They would most likely fail to do much, as the Allies had air superiority, and these large, slow-moving targets would be easy pickings for fighter bombers. 
Many of you might be wondering why we haven't mentioned the rat, and that is because it will be receiving its own video in this series. Us at Arafo Documentaries wish you a great day.